head over to losingmymind.com to check out our latest song, Genocide. Support our work. Now onto the show. I am of the view that women's suffrage changed politics for the worse because I think it opened the um, floodgates to uh, opportunistic, charming sociopaths who might previously have been weeded out um, or considered not the right kind of person. Sometimes you see glimpses of this in, I mean, if you, you watch Mary Poppins, right? And the dad who's kind of like vilified um, Mr. Banks is, is the only virtuous character in the whole thing. Um, and, and, and he's talking about how discipline, order, and, and that essential English virtue, restraint, are the basis of a, of a well function, of an of a orderly civilization. Um, and and those, are the, those are the virtues, the values, the, the um, habits that we should uh, aspire to. And all around it, he's, he's got this, um, he's got this uh, uh, pampered, um, prideful mess of a wife who can't be bothered to be a mother uh, and is churning through n uh, nannies instead because she's um, you know, got her whatever. Uh, there's, there's this um, witch who descends from the sky and, and you know, uh, gives the kids psychedelic drugs, I guess. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, we got to remake this movie, by the way. And tells them, no, it's already done. They already did it. Um, uh, you know, and, and um, uh, teach it, teach, uh, she, she kind of um, wears the thin veneer of rules and manners, but really she preaches chaos. Um, and she under and she, you know she she undermines. She, there, there's stuff in that movie that that is on purpose. Like uh, in um, in uh, uh, Feed the Birds, you know she 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 has the audacity to claim knowledge of what the saints uh, <laughs> think about uh, you know airborne rodents uh, pooping on cathedrals, uh, damaging the architecture. Uh, it's it's a it's a very subversive movie about uh, the triumph of witchcraft over over virtue. But um, you know. Uh, is that what it is? Mary Poppins? Oh, it's hideous. It's That's fascinating. Very, it's, no, it's very, it's very dark. It's very dark. Um, you have this, you have this. We got to do, we, gotta like, we have to do like a thing where we watch it and you do like a director's commentary kind of thing where you explain There's all this stuff. There's a show in Britain, I think, called Gogglebox where, where, where the, the show is two people on a couch talking about the show they're watching and it sounds like unendurable, but it's really good. Um, Bobble box? Gogglebox. Goggle I think, I think box. I've, I've never seen it, but, the, but, the, but the, um, everybody, everybody loves it. Uh, no, I, I mean, there's so much in that movie, you know, to, to unpack the way that she um, she presents as as um, uh, as, a, as a as an appropriate um, uh, candidate for the the role, um, but then immediately sets about wrecking the social order, um, uh, and it's a it's a particular kind of uh, Christian restraint that. Um, Mr. Banks is 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 explaining. He's you know he's saying that we can't just give in to every uh, reckless and wild uh, abandoned temptation. He's saying you know in order in order to prosper and to be happy and to be successful and to and for and, and for our ancestors um, to be proud of us and our descendants to be grateful to us, um, there are virtues we should cleave to um, that involve not indulging ourselves. And what does Mary Poppins uh, come and do? She comes in and, and makes, a, makes a mockery of the business of, of tidying the room by using witchcraft uh, so there's no effort expended, um, uh, violating the natural order of things and teaching the kids that um, uh, uh, they can do their chores without the effort required and therefore they don't learn lessons from it. She takes them on this psychedelic journey, teaching them nonsense words. Uh, she uh, praise, praises... Uh, um, I mean, it's, you, you won't know this as Americans, but you don't feed pigeons in London. They're rats with wings. That's what, it, that's what we call them, you know. This, this lullaby to, to, to send people to sleep um, is, 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 is about encouraging um, a vermin that has destroyed the architecture of London, you know. Everything in that movie is about um, uh, undermining or overturning uh, the, the natural order of things. And this is, this is what uh, the headless, selfish, prideful mother wrapped up in her own political um, escapades, neglecting her duties as a mother, uh, is engaged in. She's engaged in the business. Now, the reason that, that, that I uh, abhor women's suffrage is not that it was uh, something women just demanded, demanded, demanded that they don't deserve or that they're not capable of executing. Actually, it was a, a, a manifestation of cowardice from the men because it was a way of saying, you're on your own, handle yourself, I'm not responsible for your decision making, and therefore I can't be held accountable for what happens yeah. uh, afterwards. Women's suffrage was a result of a crisis of confidence in the men. Um, and this was greatly enhanced and, and, um, uh, and concentrated by the two world wars that Europe uh, uh, experienced, where men, I think, basically um, lost the, uh, 
they felt like they lost the right to rule. Uh, they felt like they'd wrecked the world. I mean, w it's difficult for us uh, from this distance to appreciate the unfathomable soci uh, you know, psychopathic horrors of the Third Reich, you know, uh, in, in, w in whatever manifestation you choose to believe, you know, whichever configuration of historical fact, it, they're all terrible. Um, how a well-ordered Christian society gets to the point of going along with that is something that ought to haunt all of us. And it haunted everybody um, because people like had friends in Germany and they're like, how could you send your kids to the Hitler Youth? Well, everybody's in the Hitler Youth. It's just like the Scouts. The, the way that that country got swept up in it, uh, it, it, it's something dark and dangerous about human nature that we are yet to really understand. It's the and, obsession with religion yeah. as an institution that's really done Christianity dirty, man. To, to say that it's out there and if I think those things, then I don't have to live like Jesus wa was, you got to live like Jesus. That's your job as a Christian. Then you, in, you embody the Christ. That's what we need. Well, I'm Catholic, so I can't agree with your uh, heretical opening, um, but, but certainly we should look to Christ as an example to live by. Um, but you know, Christ is not um, Christ is not an emotionally incontinent person in the Gospels. I don't think he ever laughs. Um, he's quite a serious guy, uh, and says quite outrageous things, um, things you couldn't say on YouTube. And he is actually quite a profoundly serious figure, despite the great joy he brings into the world by his uh, his, his selflessness, his sacrifice. I feel but like, very um, interestingly, I just also but, want to but, bring but up what he yeah. what he what he lays down for us. Um, is what became, you know, the, the great classic English virtue of restraint. It's, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say no because I, I understand that there are consequences that come with short-term pleasure, and this really is the most useful lesson that anybody can teach their children. And Mary Poppins is a, is just an extended, um, uh, it's an extended undermining of the most valuable lesson that any parent can teach their child. Yeah, and when you look at modern entertainment, you do see a lot of those themes regurgitated and exaggerated, uh, especially with well, some of the early... Well, now things are just grotesque. Yeah, so. it, it, it's, it's unwatchable because it's not entertainment, it's propaganda. A lot of it is is sometimes, if we're lucky, it's subconscious and subliminal, but many times it's overt, in your face, the larger messaging of not just degeneracy, short-term pleasures, but, but just also destroying not only race relations, sex relations, but destroying kind of humanity from the inside with this psychological mass hypnosis, as I call it. The individual subject matter are all, you know, arguable and, and we'll probably agree about all of that. But the real characteristic that it, that it has, um, the way to understand it, because it's happened before in history, um, the, the, the nature, its character, its nature, is that we are entering a late decadent period of gloating that is common to all um, illegitimate tyrannies. Uh, and the one we have right now is something that Orwell didn't foresee, a weird blend of private enterprise and government um, run by the same people um, who operate both for their um, exclusive enrichment and which has impoverished all of us in spiritual ways, in financial ways, in all kinds of ways, uh, culturally, you name it. In, in every conceivable way, our lives and our society are getting dramatically worse with each day that passes. And, and my decision personally has been to refuse to play along with that. And I won't operate within those rules because I think it's, um, I think it's beneath the dignity of a human being to do so. Um, I don't mean that as a, I don't mean that as an insult to you guys because I, I, I admire the discipline that it takes. And I, I understand the calculus that you've made, right? We're going to, we're going to say less, but to more people. I totally get it. Um, and, and there's a, there's, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a spectrum on which we all operate. I'm on the opposite end to you guys. So, um, you guys and I have taken a different strategy to the same problem. Um, both are right and both are needed. You know, I just, you know, it, we just, we just are on opposite ends of it. Um, but the, the, this, this, le this gloating, the, um, the gleefulness with which they um, revel in their unaccountable and untrammeled power over us is intolerable and unsustainable. And when that happens um, in history, the empire in question typically falls really quickly, shortly thereafter. And when big nation, when big empires fall, they don't fall like you think they're going to. They don't kind of ossify. They don't um, disintegrate. They evaporate. Uh, it happened to Rome. It happened to the USSR. And it will happen to America. The, 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 yeah, we're on so that time period. The, the, ve the vector for America is probably going to be the petrodollar and the dollar general. I, I, yep. I asked you about uh, the, the loss of 
I guess we, we don't care about legacy anymore, or at least many do, but many don't. It's and a shift in priorities from the widening of the electorate. Uh, right, right. Electorate. You mentioned that. So I, want, I want to specifically go in, the, in that direction. You're saying that women don't care about legacy as much as men do, or what's the, what's the, so the how know, does that, how does that happen? A system working perfectly um, is a system where everything is in its right place, uh, performing the function for which it was designed. Okay. Uh, and and if, any, if any component in that system is uh, improperly utilized, or uh, damaged, or in the wrong place, the whole thing can seize up, and sometimes it can it can be destroyed. Uh, a fine watch from a Swiss watchmaker um, will be uh, uh, ir uh, irretrievably wrecked by um, a component being moved from here to here. You know, uh, you can't you can't fix it. Only the very expensive ones, but you get the point. We I, t I take the same view of creation. Um, we ought not tamper with. Um, uh, the order that has been laid out for us. And there are different, distinct, um, equal but different, I suppose people want to say. Um, there are uh, distinct, I don't think they are equal. I think women are, are greatly venerated and always have been. Um, and when women ask for equality with men, I, I'm of the view that they are silly in asking for a demotion. Um, what, what we shouldn't tamper with is the proper order of things. There's a proper order to the uh, physical world, to the natural world, that reflects the heavenly order, that represents the supernatural, that, that reflects the supernatural, right? Um, it's an echo of it. And when we have men doing things that women should be doing, and women doing things that men should be doing, and when we commingle the definitions of those two things, um, we risk the whole system falling down. And I think that's what's happening. Uh, I think that's what we're witnessing. Uh, and Camille Paglia, the uh, uh, feminist critic, um, says that uh, the one characteristic, uh, uh, an infallible guide to imminent collapse in all great civilizations in the past is an obsession with, uh, uh, she calls it a kind of gender madness, right? Um, without getting into the subject uh, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a way that would be dangerous, um, a, a preoccupation with... Um, innovative and sometimes confusing new definitions of things, a sort of confusing of this fundamental natural world. This is the moment at which civilizations lose their way, and they don't last long after that. So um, I think that um, it is a man's responsibility to protect and to provide. I think that um, men go out and create all these extraordinary things ultimately to impress women. Uh, when men want to impress other men, they take creatine and work out. Um, that's always for other men. Uh, women don't care about, uh, about physique so much. Uh, that, that's always for, for, for men. Um, something sort of intrinsically homosexual about that. But um, when men go out and, and, and achieve these great feats, uh, building civilizations, you know, constructing cathedrals, all the rest of it, it's... Um, it's because they want access, they want in, and they want to, you know, they're, 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 it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a romantic project. And it's beneath the dignity of, of wives and mothers uh, who have a far more important purpose on earth to give them, you know, the petty workings of these political experiments that men have come up with to occupy themselves, um, to, 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 you know, distract them with that stuff. And, and, I don't, and I don't think it's something that um, women especially love. I mean, they, women kind of hint this. Uh, uh, sort of, they send us <coughs> subtle indications that this might be the case. Um, you see very often women kind of adopt the politics of their husbands. Um, it's kind of a phenomenon that, that um, uh, it, it's, actually, it's actually more pronounced the more extreme that the husband's politics are. So you have, um, uh, you have these, these women who uh, fall in love with like jihadis. Uh, and they adopt, you know, radical Islam, and then they go husband surfing because their husbands all, you know, kind of do suicide bombings. Um, they bounce from husband to husband, but they start off, you know, like perfectly normal. Uh, 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 Jihad Jane, Jihad Jenny. There's a Samantha, Samantha Luthwaite. Uh, loads of examples of this. Women who just kind of adopt any politics at all uh, to get the guy, right? And this is their way of telling us that they don't really care. You know, it's just like they, they have other priorities. They want to feel safe. They want to feel secure. They want to feel loved, provided for, protected. Uh, and, and part of doing that is. Um, is sparing women from the ugly, baffling, and frankly, squalid world of politics full of opportunists and uh, freaks and inappropriate people. You know, they're all the people who want power, right? The people in politics. Uh, uh, and so we, we, we suffer them. We, but you, you think women shouldn't be in politics? Um, I think that in America, because American men are so, um, uh, are so utterly pathetic, um, <laughs> Uh, all talk and, and no action, 
that uh, women, I find American women much more impressive than American men. And, in, and there are lots of examples of women having to step up where men have left vacuums. I think Marjorie Taylor Greene is an example of that. Um, hmm. She will readily, readily tell you that in a perfect world, she wouldn't have to be doing this, but she felt that it was necessary and that she was the right person at the right time. Where are right men? Place. Um, because, no, because no man is doing it uh, for her. So, so I, I see her as a, as a kind of, um, uh, a sort of a Boudicca, uh, Joan of Arc kind of a warrior queen archetype, you know? She's doing the thing that no man will step up and do. And, you know, every couple of hundred years, men need, need a reminder like that, that they're, um, uh, uh, that they're reneging on their responsibilities. Uh, I don't think it's the proper arena of women to, to concern themselves with, uh, you know, the, the intricacies of politics uh, because they have a higher and holier and much more important purpose um, to which their skills are better suited, and I, I, I think that when you when you know when when in the in the two world wars and women flooded the market, the, the workplace out of necessity, uh, and then you have you know the invention of the washing machine, which frees up this enormous amount of time. Um, once women had been well uh, uh, pleaded with to to come and keep think, keep the, the the factory line running. Uh, nobody felt they had the right coming back from war when they direct the world to say, "All right, back in the kitchen, love." Um, so, so they just sort of accepted the new the new reality. Let me, I, let me. We can see what's we can see what's happened as a result. There's there's been a feminizing of our institutions. Police forces have started to act more like school teachers, where they're kind of scolding people for using the wrong language rather than uh, 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 you know uh, criminals. There's all kinds of hints that the priorities, that the mission statements, that the uh, modus operandi of, of our of our state institutions and, and and now private enterprises too, have have changed. And I I, I don't think for the better uh, as a result of of um, what was missold to women as um, emancipation and was actually their enslavement. Would you would you advocate for repealing the Nineteenth Amendment? Absolutely. For those, for those that don't know, it's the women's right to vote. We owe women um, an enormous apology for the imposition that we placed on them um, by this grievous ongoing offense, subjecting them to the ugliness of politics when they should be concerned with uh, raising the next generation and, and perpetuating the dynasty, which is, is, of course, the thing that the man is worrying about. Uh, and finds a, you know, he finds a wife that he believes will be a partner um, with him in that, pro in that, in that task. Um, and while he's having these grandiose uh, um, thoughts and, and building these extraordinary structures, it's the women that are doing the hard work of raising the next generation. They can't do both. Um, and I think now we've seen, and women are beginning to admit in columns in the Atlantic and elsewhere, that they couldn't do both and they wish they'd done the other one. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.